Hi, I'm Dr. James Simcock. I'm one of the surgeons here at Southpaw's Specialty Surgery for Animals in Melbourne, Australia. So today I'm going to talk to you about cranial cruciate ligament disease in dogs. This is one of the most common causes of pain and lameness seen in the dog. First up, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the anatomy of the canine pelvic limb to help get you orientated. This first bone here is the tibia, and this one here is the femur. The cruciate ligament is represented by the green line and is circled here in red. So what causes the cruciate ligament to be diseased? Essentially there are two issues. The first is that there is unfavourable biomechanics in the joint. And what does this mean? Basically, the tibial plateau or surface where the femur sits is tilted backwards. This is represented by the angle alpha. This means that every time the animal bears weight on the leg, the cruciate ligament is under strain. The second issue is that there is unfavourable biology in the ligament. Essentially, the ligament is smaller compared to unaffected dogs and has lower quality collagen. Now, the combination of these two issues means that the cranial cruciate ligament becomes damaged. Once the ligament becomes damaged, then osteoarthritis begins to establish itself inside the joint. And this osteoarthritis then causes more pain and lameness and really pushes the debilitation in this condition. So what can we do to treat this problem? Basically, treatment is divided into medical and surgery categ surgical categories. And all of the treatment options are aimed at slowing the progression of osteoarthritis inside the joint. In most cases, a combination of surgery and medicine is used together. The first aspect of medical management is exercise restriction. This means controlled activity over uncontrolled activity. The second aspect is weight reduction. This has been shown in people and in animals to have a massive impact on the severity and progression of osteoarthritis. The third thing is pentosan or cartrophin injections. These are disease-modifying drugs that help to slow the progression of osteoarthritis. The fourth aspect is an EPA-rich diet. EPA is a fatty acid that is found in high concentrations in seafood like green lip mussels. This helps to downregulate inflammation inside the joint. The fifth thing and the last thing is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. While these medications are great at controlling the pain and lameness we see with arthritis, they do have the greatest potential for side effects, especially when they are used in the long term. By using a combination of the first four steps, it is hoped that we can push the point in time when you need the non steroidal anti-inflammatories as far into the future as possible. Okay, so enough about what is medicine. What are our options for treatment with surgery? The first treatment that we have is an extracapsular repair or a D'Angeli suture. This procedure involves placing a prosthetic ligament on the outside of the joint. This ligament stabilizes the joint in a similar fashion to the native cranial cruciate ligament. We typically recommend this procedure for dogs less than 15 kilos and dogs that are less active. The results of this are typically excellent. The second procedure is called a tibial plateau levelling osteotomy, or TPLO. This procedure is performed on larger dogs that are very active and involves cutting the top of the tibia and rotating the top part of the bone to reduce the tibial plateau angle. This stabilises the knee and reduces the strain on the cruciate ligament. A plate is then placed on the bone to hold everything together. Again, the results with this procedure are excellent.